khaki as bears, cave of wonders wide. Howdy hey everybody, welcome to my very first video as Yankee Yaz Bear and a theory video at that. I've got two great topics for our very first Discussion Den episode. I'm not sure at what rate I'll be posting these, but I can assure you that liking and subscribing sure does help a lot. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, after all we have fun around here. Alright, let's dive into theory number one. We'll start with an easier one to dial in on. Are Moondrop and Sunrise the same animatronic or not? In the second Security Breach trailer, it shows them both in the same transitional room. It seems like Sunrise appears during the day, and Moondrop comes out during the night. Never are they shown with each other in the trailer. So are they the same? I believe so, but here's why I think this. 1. Sunrise has the moon on their face, craters and all. And if they were different, why would they keep the moon on the sun's face, you know? It's just, it just seems really, really strange for them to do something like that. On to number two. In Freddy and Friends, episode two, you can see the sun rays pop out of Sunrise's head, which means they can also go into Sunrise's head, which could mean it's a transition into Moondrop. Also, my third reasoning, in the same clip, a single voice can be heard laughing. <laughs> it's not two separate voices, it is one male voice. And this leads me to think that yes, they are the same animatronic. But what if they aren't? On the contrary, here's why I think they might not be the same. The clothing either disappears or changes between Moondrop and Sunrise, such as the nightcap on Moondrop. When he spins his head, the cap just disappears, which is a little strange. Leads me to believe, like, are they the same? I mean, it shows them changing, but are they? Another interesting thing I remembered was that in the very first Security Breach trailer, Moondrop is shown in the kitchen outside of the transitioning room. We don't yet know what that could mean, if it still would follow a cycle or not, even if it, if it does follow a cycle. Who knows, if it's out of the room, maybe it just stays. Alright, that was theory number one. Tell me what you think in the comments, I'd love to hear some ideas of whatever you have. <laughs> On to theory number two. Now, this might come off as a little strange, a little far-fetched, but I've noticed a certain trend in the Freddy and Friends on tour episodes. The title of the series itself would remind any Five Nights at Freddy's fan of Fred Bear and Friends, the TV show from FNAF 4. But the locations within these episodes also seem to relate to Fred Bear in some way. For example, Episode 1, The Trees. In the Silver Eyes novel, the path towards Fredbear's took Charlie through trees. And I quote, There was a cluster of trees up ahead, gathered together as though around a campfire. Tall and short, or thick and scraggly. And yes, I know that first one seems a little... A, a bit of a jump. Yes, I know. But when you analyze the other episodes and come up with little, little coincidences, maybe, it starts to kind of add up. For example, episode two, The Diner. If I know any FNAF fans, their ears would perk up at the word diner. And for sure, this tiny little building out here is a diner. I, I just have the feeling it's got the star doors, it's got the checkered pattern on the ground. And they sing about food. And, just for a little extra mile, I went back through the Silver Eyes and found a description of Fred Bears. And I quote, The building itself was long and dilapidated. It was a single story with a dark roof and weather-beaten walls. The place had once been painted red, but time and sun and rain had won out over the paint. 
It was peeled and curling, whole long strips of it gone and the wood beneath showing, dark with what might be rot. Its foundation was overgrown with tall grass, and Charlie thought it looked as if it was sinking, as if the whole structure was slowly being swallowed by the earth. Next episode, episode three, The House. Just the mere appearance of the Freddy and Friends house is very similar to the house from Five Nights at Freddy's 4. There's not much more to talk about that one since we know Five Nights at Freddy's 4, haha, <laughs> Fred Bear, Bite of 87. So we're moving on to episode 4, which is the last one that we have gotten so far. This one was a little harder at first to make a connection or anything, but it takes place in the cave. So in this episode, Freddy and friends enter a large cave. And when I really thought about caves, I thought about Fredbear, caves. Fredbear, caves. And then, boom. Bears, caves. Caves, bears, bear caves. Bears hibernate in caves. I'm still just making connections. Sorry, but like, it's there. It's not right in front of us, but it's there. <laughs> it might be a coincidence. It might be absolutely far-fetched. But I do have one more connection. I feel like we already know all about the purple and yellow frames within the trailer. Or whatever you want to call it at this point. Um, and the reason I started thinking about this was the colors purple and yellow. Before we got the glitch trap, we noticed the colors were purple and yellow. Lots of it. So, what if those could be resembling or representing Fredbear and Spring Bonnie? We know they are the purple and yellow animatronics. And now so is glitch trap. So it's it's a little interesting. Because Glitchtrap has the yellow suit with the purple bow tie, purple vest, and all that. It's just an interesting thing to think about. What if, you know? And that's not even all the connections I've come across within the Silver Eyes novel. But that's where I'm going to leave the very first episode of Discussion Den. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, or if I sparked any thoughts. With all that said... See you on the flip side. Yeah, yeah, yes, bears. Cave of wonders. Wonder.